based on questions you have been sending me in response to parts one and two of the series of videos I have been doing on how Allah describes the process of repentance and forgiveness. In this video, we will be studying three things. Number one, what is a sin? How does Allah define a sin in the Quran? Number two, what are the different types of sins described in the Quran by Allah? And number three, how does the process of repentance apply to different types of sins? Asalaamu Alaikum, I'm Munib Ali. Welcome to another video on the Quran study channel. So we have been studying what the Quran tells us about the process of repentance and forgiveness. You may recall that in parts one and two, we studied what the Quran tells us firstly about the basic conditions for our repentance to even qualify for potential acceptance by Allah. And secondly, we studied the three step process described in the Quran for repentance to be accepted. You may remember we took the example of our friend here who was sinning and we drew out what the three step process is according to the Quran. I am not intending to describe that in detail in this video. So if you haven't seen the videos, please go over to our YouTube channel where you can find both of these parts. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as we upload new videos on a weekly basis. And let me just say we really appreciate all the comments and the questions that you've been sending in to us. Please continue to write to us with those questions and also your own understanding of what Allah tells us in the Quran. Just use the comments section on the YouTube channel. Okay, we will get to today's subject to answer the three questions which I set out up front. But before we do that, a few words on this overall topic. You see, the subject of sinning can be quite a discomforting one. You see, we all sin. We all make mistakes. And so if you are like me, you will worry about the results of those sins. You will fear for the outcomes of those sins. You will want to be forgiven. So this is quite a personal subject. And sometimes we can be quite fearful about it. And it is true that Allah provides many warnings in the Quran about the results of sins that we commit. However, alongside those warnings, Allah also provides us with a lot of good news in relation to sins and in relation to forgiveness. And I don't want us to forget that. That also is very important. So we will also be studying that per the Quran, the good news that Allah gives us about this topic. Okay, now, so the first question, what is a sin? So the word Allah uses in the Quran to describe sin is ithm. Alif, tha, mim. The meaning of this word is sin, but it also means something which is damaging, something which is harmful. And that may be harmful to ourselves as well as harmful to others. It also means falsehood, something which is not true, a path which is based on falsehood rather than the true path. It also means transgression, transgression of commandments and rules. So if you put all of this together, ithm, sin, is any action you take that transgresses the boundaries set by Allah in the Quran. If you go against any of Allah's commandments, you are committing ithm, a sin. So a sin is not a particular type of transgression. It is not a particular type of wrong deed. It covers anything, any action where you are not following Allah's commands. 
Okay, I hope that is clear. Now, Allah uses the word ithm in many places in the Quran to describe actions which go against his commandments. And here is a list of some of those. Look at all of these. Spend a few seconds looking at these. They are all different types of sins, transgressions. I've given the references in the Quran for you as well. Please go ahead and look at some of these references up. They all use the word ithm, eating forbidden food, arrogance and pride, hearing Allah's messages but then persisting as if not heard them, inventing lies about God, rejecting the truth, so on and so forth. So these are just examples. Remember, any action you take which is transgressing Allah's commandments is ithm. It is a sin. Now, the next point. What are the different types of sins? Does Allah differentiate between different types of sins in the Quran? Have a look at this. This is how we must categorize different types of sins, different types of transgressions. One particular group of categories is ithm or sins which may have been committed out of ignorance or by mistake. Committed out of ignorance or by mistake. Why is this important? Well, you might remember in part one, when we were looking at the basic conditions which Allah describes for our repentance to be acceptable, is whether we committed the sin out of ignorance. Recall that we studied Surah An-Nisa, which is chapter 4, verses 17 and 18. I'm not proposing to go through those in detail again today, but please have a look at part one of these videos to understand how Allah describes that. And this is really important because some of our subscribers, for example, have written to us who have converted to Islam recently. And they are worried that previously, for instance, out of ignorance, they used to undertake certain deeds which now they know are against the commandments of Allah. And they are thinking and they are questioning whether those types of deeds will qualify for the acceptance if they repent. So that's why this category is very important to understand. Okay, so remember, if there is a sin that has been committed out of ignorance or by mistake, you meet the basic condition for repentance to potentially be accepted. Of course, in part two, we discuss what that process is you have to then go through to have your repentance accepted. Okay, then the next category you need to think about is whether a sin was committed out of necessity, a dire need, a necessity. This also is important because Allah says to us in the Quran that if you committed a sin out of necessity where you had no other choice, then it is not a sin. For example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 173, Allah describes the type of food which is forbidden, prohibited. But in the same verse, Allah says, and look at the text which I've highlighted here. But whoever is forced by necessity, neither desiring it nor transgressing, there is no sin upon him. So Allah is explaining to us that if you did not intend to transgress whilst knowing that it's a transgression, but there was a necessity and by that you were forced to transgress this boundary, then it will not be considered a sin. Now, this is an exceptional circumstance. You cannot use this as a get out for committing sins. You cannot say, well, I lied because if I didn't lie, then I might have gotten into trouble. No, that's not what this exception is for. This is where there is a dire circumstance and there is absolutely no other choice but for you to transgress a boundary set by Allah. So in this case, for example, if there was 
no other food available and you were starving and the only food that was available was something which has been prohibited then it is no sin upon you if you ate that forbidden food okay the other two types of categories that you have to think about is whether the sin you committed is a major sin and whether it affected other people not just yourself you see Allah differentiates between major sins and minor sins here are some examples of some major sins which have been mentioned in the Quran for example associating partners with Allah known as shirk is a major sin killing a person or destroying another person is a major sin committing adultery wrongly accusing a woman of adultery and go further down the list consuming intoxicants gambling consuming orphans possessions terminating children for the fear of poverty these are all described by Allah in the Quran as major sins you will notice that most of these sins directly affect or indirectly affect other people not just yourself and we will come on to why it is important to identify such major sins now let's take an example of a person that has committed a major sin and let's think about how the three-step process that we studied in part two of these videos applies we will look at how the three-step process for repentance applies now imagine if this person here has been consuming an orphan's possessions without the orphan even knowing imagine if this person was the guardian for this orphan and he decided to steal this orphan's possessions slowly secretly without this orphan even knowing this orphan has come of age but does not know that this person took some of his possessions let's take a look at this diagram we studied the last time and think about how the process of repentance must now apply so the first thing that this individual has to do is stop consuming this orphan's possessions he has to realize genuinely realize that he was wrong and he has to make a firm commitment to change he has to make a firm commitment that he will no longer do this and that he will get onto the straight path again that in the simplest form is the beginning of repentance then and this is really important i want you to focus on this this person has to return and get onto the right path that returning means making amends we studied this in part two he has to make amends now he has to rectify the situation and compensate the person that has been harmed in this case the orphan and how does he do that he has to return the money that he has stolen and he has to obtain the forgiveness of the orphan because you cannot undo the effect on yourself and the person you've harmed until that person has forgiven you you cannot consider yourself to have returned to the original situation unless that person who you harmed has forgiven you so that forgiveness the obtaining of forgiveness is critical it's crucial and when that is done when you have compensated and when you have obtained forgiveness then you must stay on the straight path never to return to the wrong path again only then allah says as we studied in part 2 only then when allah accept your repentance okay so don't forget as part of the second step of repentance you must obtain forgiveness because without it you have not undone the effects of that sin right so let's summarize this now so a sin is any action that you take which transgresses the boundaries set by god set by allah 
any deeds we do which is not on the straight path, any deed which is not on the right path, which Allah has given to us, is a sin. And we also studied that it is important to understand and differentiate between the circumstances of a sin, whether a sin was done out of ignorance, whether it was done by mistake, whether it was a necessity, a dire situation. And then we studied that there are major sins which Allah has described in the Quran. And we looked at an example of a major sin where the sinner affected somebody else and how the three-step process for repentance applied to that individual. Now, I promised that we will also study the good news that Allah gives us in the Quran related to repentance and forgiveness. Something that's going to give us hope, motivation and peace. But I'm going to do that in next week's video. The reason is that I want to summarize and put together everything we have studied about this very important topic in one video. I will summarize these three parts that we have just studied, conclude it with the good news and put it all together for you. And inshallah with that, our understanding of this important topic will be complete. So don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. As I said, we upload new videos every week and once you've subscribed, if you click on the little bell icon on your screen, you'll be notified when we have uploaded our next video. And also don't forget to continue writing to us in the comment section. Keep sending us your comments about whether you found this study useful. Keep sending us your questions. Keep in touch with us. That's also helpful for us because we are all humble students of our Creator's Word, which is contained in the Quran. Until the next video. Assalamu alaikum.